Good morning, everyone. You're watching Barnstable this morning. I'm Sarah Colvin here with Rob Maselli, uh, president of the Cape and Islands chapter of Mass Bike. Good morning, Rob. Hi, nice to see you again. Nice to see you as well. And we are out here uh, right outside Town Hall talking a little bit about bike maintenance and safety. So important when you have a bike, when you ride a bike, to keep a lot of things in mind. And I think uh, probably the first and, and foremost thing that you want to think about is your helmet. Absolutely. And I brought a helmet here. And um, I'll just keep it simple on a helmet. A helmet can save your life bottom line. Um, it's your constitutional choice to wear one or not, um, but it can save your life and leave it at that. The most important thing is you've decided to wear your helmet. Uh, hit the fit of your helmet is so important. Um, and you think of eyes, ears, and mouth when you fit your helmet. So your helmet goes on over your forehead first. And with your eyes, look up. Can you see your helmet? With your ears, letter V, on the straps of the helmet so that the straps are right below your earlobes and then open your mouth you should be able to feel your helmet pull down gently on your head there should be a fingers uh, worth of space between the chin strap and your neck so it's comfortable you want to have it comfortable so you'll wear it all the time and, and no more than that. So you don't want it kind of hanging down and being loose. You no. want it tight enough so it stays on. And when you look up, do you want to be able to see the helmet or you not see the, see the helmet? Or you can take your fingers and rub them across your eyes. If you can feel your eyebrows and the helmet, then it's, it's, it's uh, in the proper position. This is the most important part of your head to protect. It's most common place where you go first on a bike is over the handlebars. And so you want to protect that. All of your um, decision making and your judgment comes from that part of your head. We need that. <laughs> Absolutely. So wear your helmets. How often, Rob, should you replace your helmet? Um, the manufacturers say every three years. Um, anytime you have a crash, the helmet has done its job that one time and you replace the helmet. A lot of companies have a crash replacement policy. I just want to add, um, for those of us over 16, uh, it's our choice to wear a helmet. If you're 16 or, or under, Massachusetts state law is you have to wear a helmet. And, and the police are ticketing, uh, warning. Uh, on the uh, other hand, what they do is they, they try to do positive stuff by stopping kids with helmets and giving them a reward, an ice cream certificate or something like that. So we go both ways. Absolutely. So very important First to have common that helmet sense, on. Like wearing seatbelts. Exactly. So some other safety things. I know we've got a, a lot of props here to talk about. Um, let's talk a little bit about the lights. Um, when and when should you have a light and where should it go on your bike? Right. Massachusetts state law now, a blinking rear light or, or stationary light on the back of the bike goes right here on the bike at night after dusk required by law within a year uh, a bike light on the front of your bike and it can be stationary or blinking would go here on the handlebar it's being used during the daytime and at night at night it's obvious uh, daytime people say why well, we have a light in daytime you want visibility. You want drivers to be able to see you. Uh, a light like this in Boston, you see most cyclists are using them now in Boston. So um, nighttime use and certainly now during the daytime. Now, if you're riding during the day, uh, you don't want to wear dark clothing like I'm wearing here, certainly not at night. Um, everywhere you go now, you see clothing in, in the neon uh, fashion. And this is, can be seen much better than than this. Definitely. So during the daytime, we say tight and bright. So bright clothing and make sure you're wearing tight clothing. So if you're a lawyer and you're driving to your law office in Boston and you're wearing your, your uh, business clothing, you don't want your pants to get caught in the chain, you use a leg strap like this. And these are reflective. So the reflector goes in the back, wrap it around your leg, and it keeps your pants from going into your chain, which can cause a crash. You've got a reflector on the back. Most people use two reflectors on one on each, each leg. So you're being um, easily seen. Again, visibility is so important. First thing people say in any crash is, oh, I didn't see the person. That's right. So no excuses, bike riders. The clothing is out there. It's available any place now. That's right. Um, and the lights, Walmart, uh, any discount store, they're less than $10. Uh, I brought... Uh, remember we talked about Bay State Bike Week? Yes. This year at Bay State Bike Week, instead of giving out t-shirts, which oh, were not way. as safe, we Very gave cool. out free lights, and this is for you. Oh, thank you. For your you. bike. Awesome. I totally need one of these for shame for me for not lot. having that. If you want, 
your bike to be there when you come out after you've left it somewhere. This is a deterrent. Uh, you can get the bigger uh, heavy duty locks, um, but uh, a thief comes up to a bike and sees this to, uh, you know, tied to the bike, uh, he'll go to the next bike if it doesn't have a lock on it. So as a deterrent, a lock, Sunscreen. Oh yeah, I always thinking. forget that. <laughs> sunscreen everywhere you go. Is that the real safety issue? So let's talk a little bit about maintenance. I think that you know we always think about maintaining our cars. We think about taking the car to the shop, getting the oil changed. But there are some really simple and do-it-yourself stuff too that you can do to your bike to keep it operating uh, safely and efficiently. So let's talk a little bit about uh, some of those things we can do. So first thing you do in the spring if you own a vehicle, which all, most of us assume is just a car, uh, bicycles are vehicles, so you need the same maintenance as, as your car. Um, and we teach A, B, C, and then quick check. So A for air, check the air in your tires because that controls where your bike is going. Um, you take your thumb, put your second thumb on top of it, unless you have a third one, you can use that too, um, <laughs> and you press down, this tire here needs air. This is soft. This tire here, press it down. Totally Ooh, needs some air, okay. a little bit. It doesn't need as much air. If you can push down on the tire, which is the rubber part, the metal part here is the wheel. If the rubber part touches the metal, then you need either a new tube or you need certainly need air in the tire. For air, the most common uh, pump is a hand pump. It's the easiest to use. Most bike shops have them. Um, I tell the kids, usually a neighbor who rides a bike will have a, a floor pump or parents who ride. Um, it's the easiest to do because you're pushing down onto the pump. There are portable pumps that you can carry on your bike. They would be attached right to your water bottle. And that's a safety issue. Ke uh, carrying water and staying hydrated is very important on your bike. Uh, a lot of uh, pumps mount up under the, it's called the top tube of the bike. Right, right up under there. And that's handy because you never know when you're out riding and you might pop a tire. You could be 20 miles from home. You could be five miles from home. You don't really want to walk the bike back. So always a good idea to have that spare tube and that uh, right here, tire. I have a tube. I have a tire um, lever. And I have extra air. Now I carry compressed air. So in this cartridge here, if I needed air, put it down on my tube press it and this uh, cartridge would fill up to uh, 100 pounds of air in a rear tire. So I could fill up two of these, one road tire, maybe two mountain bike tires. Oh, that's great. You know, I always thought those compressed air, the CO2, were just one shot deals, but it's not. One shot if you're on a road bike. Okay. If, you, if you want 110 pounds of air in your tire, but um, on a bike like this, I put 50 pounds, so I could use it two times. Indeed, and people can see if they look on the side of their tire. That will generally tell them the the way you want, how much you want yeah, to inflate. The smaller the tire, the higher the air pressure. The bigger the tire, the, the less air that needs to be put in. Great. So then B uh, and the ABCs. B is for brakes. Of course, you want to check your brakes. So check your front brake. You um, compress your lever. Hold the bike up. Doesn't move. Your front brake is fine. Rear brake. Same thing. Uh, I tell kids, if you pick up your bike, the brakes aren't functioning, um, then you give it to a, a shop or, or an adult to have them fix that because you don't want to mess with your brakes. Um, some bikes don't have hand brakes. They have a rear brake, which is called a coaster brake. You push back on the pedal and the bike should be um, stopped. And one thing I tell everyone when I teach about brakes is even if your brakes are working, in the back of your mind, you've got to say, what would I do if I'm coming down a big hill and my brakes fail? And, and the common response, most kids, they're, I, the fourth and fifth graders I teach are, are really uh, understanding of, of safety. And they know right away, you jump off the bike. You get your helmet on, you might scrape your elbow, you might scrape your knee, but it'd be a lot less traumatic than running into a truck or a bus at the end of the hill. Yeah. So that's very important. And then C, the chain. Uh, I know that years ago here on the Cape, there was a fatality on a bike path and it was someone riding a bike. Their chain was rusted, the chain stopped, and the person was ejected from the bike, not wearing a helmet, um, and it caused them uh, to lose their life. So a chain, you look down at the chain and you want to make sure that it's a dark uh, black or gray and not rust colored. <laughs> so if it's orange, um, you can use uh, WD-40, which is a just a penetrant to take the rust off, and then um, you you go out. I use a company called Pedro's product, and this is called Change, 
and it's specifically designed for bicycle chains. This particular company, all of their products are biodegradable. Oh, that's, that's why I choose to use this company. So um, you lubricate the chain, and then you check to see that there's enough lube by rubbing your finger on the chain, and there should be a nice black mark on your finger. A little bit of grease, never hurt anybody. A little bit of grease. You can use it for an eye shadow if you want, for <laughs> at night if you're playing football or basketball. So um, then the quick check is, is you stop and you quickly check the other things that you know that are important on your bike. On this bike here, they have what's called a quick release. And the quick release is designed so that if you get a flat and you want to change it in a hurry, if you're in a race or you're out in the, on a trail, your tire comes right off very easily. Um, when you put it back on, you reattach your brake, it's very, very important that this quick release is tight. So you, you put it on and you take the palm of your hand, press it with the palm of your hand, and you look, there should be an indentation in the palm of your hand. The other quick checks would be putting your brake on and moving your bike back and forth to make sure there's no play in this part of the bike here. Um, checking your pedals and your cranks and making sure they have it. Certainly the most important thing is all of these um, fasteners that attach the, uh, the, the bar, your stem, your seat post, if they're loose and it um, affects the fit of the bike, then you've, you don't have the control that you would get um, if your bike was properly maintained. Indeed, and that fit is something that's really important uh, to efficiency and comfort and not injuring yourself. And, and would you suggest that people do have themselves kind of professionally fitted for their bicycle? Absolutely. When you buy a bicycle, um, it, it's the shop's responsibility, not only to sell you the, the right product, but to make sure before you leave the shop that you've been properly fitted, that, that you've been educated about helmets, you understand that you should be drinking water on the bike because um, they're responsible for your well-being on the road. Um, a lot of shops do that without even asking, um, but certainly you never leave the shop unless you're comfortable that the bike fits you, uh, it's the proper bike for you, and that um, you have the right equipment, the right accessories. Great. Well, Rob, thank you so much, as well, always. A really so important. important. Absolutely, and we love seeing people uh, out riding their bikes, and uh, I know I'll see you out on the road uh, sometime soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Rob, That's right. Rob Maselli, of course, uh, Cape Cod and Islands uh, president chapter of the Cape and Islands chapter of Mass Bike. For Barnstable this morning, I'm Sarah Colvin.